Yeah, good work. Yep. <laughs> okay, Kurt. So for everyone listening at home, um, could you please introduce yourself? Tell me a little bit about you. Yes, uh, I'm a lifelong Uper. My entire family's from the UP. My extended family's from the UTP, and my uh, ancestors even founded the town of Karenville over by Escanaba back in the 1800s. Um, I have a wife and three children. I live in Brimley, Michigan. I was born and raised in the Sioux, but I moved to Brimley, Michigan for work. I was a police officer, and I raised my family there. I've been working as a police officer for about 20 years now. I've been active in you know, local and regional politics for probably 10 more years or more. Um, I did go to Lake Superior State University, have a bachelor's of science degree in political science, public administration. Um, I did join the United States Navy right out of high school. And uh, after a few months of boot camp, I was injured during training and ended up getting a medical honorable discharge. Uh, so that's when I moved mm-hmm. back home and started going to college, working in the area. And then I eventually worked as a law enforcement officer. So that's my background. Yeah, sure. Thank you for that. And Kurt, so tell me a bit about how your background has led you to running this race this year. Well, um, I have ran for state office before a couple times. And um, I think my background of law enforcement, I think is, um, to me, that's public service. And, you know, being an elected official is public service. Also, you're serving the public. And I just have a passion for people. I have a passion for um, public service and trying to make the lives of people better. And I think I have some of the background, real life work experience, um, education, and many of the other things that are going to be needed to be a, a strong and effective advocate for the people of the 108th district. So I just think my background is Um, something that will help set me apart from some of the other candidates. I'm the only one that has been elected to um, public office. I'm the only candidate that has served in the United States military, and I think those are two important things that speak a lot to, you know, where my heart is and my passion is for the, the people, our communities, our state, and our country. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Thank you. And now following the last general election, there was a lot of talk about democracy being at risk through voting methods or the soundness of our elections. What are your thoughts on that in the past and moving forward? Um, Can you kind of be a little more specific on what you're asking? Sure. Um, uh, Following the last general election, um, there was a lot of talk about people believing that Trump is still the president or saying that the election was just rigged and that there is no faith in it, sorts of things and ideas like that. Um, What are your thoughts on that idea in the past and moving forward with uh, this coming election? Yeah, sure. Well, I do think that every election you see, you know, you see things happen that shouldn't happen. And you see every election people are charged with voter fraud and ballot stuffing, etc. It happens every election. You know, you try to keep it to a minimum, of course. And, you know, when issues come up that there seems to be evidence, then it should be investigated, as it has been in the past. I think that because of the, you know, COVID pandemic over the last couple of years, that it threw everything in a, you know, turmoil and right through an election for the president. And so, yeah, of course, there was lots of things that possibly happened that probably shouldn't have happened i think we've seen some other states such as wisconsin where the supreme court showed that you know the ballot um boxes that were placed all over the you know voting districts violated state law and i think michigan had some of those same issues where um the legislator that the legislator is the only one allowed according to the constitution to regulate our elections and i think we've seen you know, ballot applications, mass mailed to people, and uh, some of the other things that never happened before in our elections. I think some of those have have to be looked into. Some may have been, and I think other things may still need to be through the courts as evidence arises. There's still, you know, active um, efforts to try to find out what, if anything, has happened. And if that evidence um, comes out that something happened that violated state law, you know, then I think it has to be looked into. So um, as far as the next election, I think we have to 
just rely on state law as it's written now and try to have a free and fair election and allow as many people um, to vote and exercise their right to vote as long as they, you know, exercise the um, safety requirements that are required under the law. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And another topic here, with the likelihood of abortion access being on the ballot in November, what's your stance on that proposal? Abortion access, you mean the voter initiative? Yes, the one that um, was collecting signatures recently um, and will likely be on the November ballot. What's my position on it? Yes. Okay, well, I'm against it. I mean, I'm not against the people voting. And, you know, if a ballot initiative follows the procedures and it's declared, uh, you know, the signatures are declared valid and it's on the ballot for the people to decide, I'm in favor of that. That's part of our constitutional process. The issue itself, I'm personally against abortion. I'm pro-life. And so, you know, I would take any um, steps as an elected official to oppose abortion. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Now, another topic here. If elected, what would you do to improve access to mental health resources in the Upper Peninsula? Well, I would, you know, see what the bill in front of me is. You know, how does it help our district and i would look at it and determine if it's a good bill if it does help with mental health access Um, i know our law enforcement agencies are asking for such assistance i'm a law enforcement officer myself with over 20 years of experience in michigan's 108th Mm -hmm. so yes there are lots of issues that um, law enforcement themselves could use help with on mental health i think some of our school issues we have kids that need you know, mental health access that they may not get on their own at home or, you know, if just left to themselves. So that's a education. Uh, the educational institutions are having a big push for mental health access and counselors located in the school. And, you know, as a school board member myself, I was elected several terms to a school board and I was elected the president of the school board for several terms. We were in favor of that. I voted in favor of that. And um, I think that's some of the things we can do. You know, law enforcement needs help with mental health services. Our schools need help to have our you know, children have access to mental health. So I'm in favor of those mm-hmm. those types of issues. But, I, you know, to be specific, I would just have to see what the bill is. And I would have to use my judgment and decide if it's in the best interest of our district. doesn't mean I'm going to support every bill in front of me that has anything attached to mental health. I'd have to look at it. Mm-hmm and see if it's a responsible bill and if it actually solves the issue it attempts to solve. Yeah. Thanks. Uh, Now, just one more topic here. If elected, what would you do to improve access to care for seniors? What do you mean, health care? Sure. Kind of two topics here. So one thing is um, just knowing that a lot of seniors in sometimes the western peninsula, uh, end of the upper peninsula, will have to travel longer times or some services aren't offered locally, as well as a recent study came out um, naming upper peninsula, especially those uh, western ends, is some of the worst places to retire. So um, just thinking in that kind of way. Sure, yeah. And I think it's important that our elders get access to the health care they need. Um, the prescription medicines that they need. Um, sometimes it's home health care or hospice that they need. So um, I'm in favor of any proposal that helps our elders. And I also know that our um, 108th district and the UP in general has a higher percentage of veteran population than the entire state. Mm-hmm. And so some of those issues are the same that our veterans are um, confronting. Uh, you know, they have to drive. We have a program around here where they have volunteer drivers to try to get veterans up to Iron Mountain or down to Sagan, uh, several hour drives just to access veteran health care clinics. Um, we are trying to build a, a, a clinic here in Sault Ste. Marie to at least, you know, initial care until they get sent off to a specialist. But mm-hmm. I would support things like that for all our elders, you know, maybe expand Medicare um, eligibility, um, you know, and then just look at any specific proposal or bills that are introduced that would help address the issues that our elders and our veterans are confronting and if i think it would help solve the problem and it's done in a you know fiscally responsible way i would support those types of initiatives Mm -hmm. yeah thank you and now uh thanks again kurt for chatting and this will be my final question do you have any message for undecided voters right now yes um i think if you're undecided it should be an easy decision if you look at the candidates they're all good people 
And you look at uh, me as a candidate that I have had, you know, 10 years of experience as an elected official locally. I've fought on issues with economic development board that I sat on for six years. The International Airport Board I sat on for six years. I was elected to the Brimley Schools, a public school here in Michigan's 108th. I was elected the board president for three terms. I was also elected to Eastern Upper Peninsula Intermediate School District Board of Directors, which represents a great portion of our 108th district. I'm also the only candidate that served in the United States military and took an oath to defend our country, our community, our families, and our and our democratic republic. And I took the same oath as a law enforcement officer for 20 years here in the 108th district. And I want to, I would love to take that oath again for the all the voters, whether they're Republican, Democrat, or undecided. I would love to take that oath as your elected representative for Michigan's 108th district to. Uh, to continue to serve as I have in the last 20 plus years, a life of service to the people of the 108 district. So I'd be honored to have their vote and their support. And I thank you for uh, listening.